Okay, my name is John McCollum. I'm Vice President, Special Projects for Piper Aircraft Corporation, operating, uh, operating out of our Lakeland Division in Lakeland, Florida. Okay, sir. Can you tell me what the... Uh what Piper is doing with the P-51 out here in Italy? Well, I'm going to tell you, first of all, it isn't the P-51, but I'll get into that just a little bit later. 1980, Congress directed the Air Force and in turn Piper to build these airplanes to demonstrate the feasibility of a low-cost turboprop to do the close air support mission to see if it had a role that might supplement what the A-10s presently do for the Air Force. In 1981, uh, Piper was given a contract by the Air Force to build the airplanes and first of all in regard to the P-51 the airplanes have their heritage in the old P-51. Two prototypes were built in 1970, in 1970 for some evaluations during the uh, Vietnamese War and later on the subject came up in the middle 70s and in 1980s I said Congress appropriated some money the airplane looks like a P-51. The airfoil is the same shape as a P-51. Part of the tail is from a P-51. The landing gear is from a P-51, although we have Gulfstream uh, wheels and uh, tires, Sabre liner brakes, but the airplane is basically all new material. There is a 2,500 horsepower turbine engine in the nose a propeller off an old A1E from, again, from the Vietnamese War. We have a Yankee Stanley seat in it. The airplane will gross out at over 14,000 pounds as compared to about 12,500 to 13,000 for the old P-51. And uh, we can carry 4,000 pounds externally on the airplane. Now, what will the airplane have to prove to you and the pilots today in order to become one of the uh, planes that we'll start to use for the Air Force? First of all, we have to prove that we can carry ordnance similar to what is used on close air support airplanes today, the CBU-58, the, the rock eyes, the rockets and so forth. We want to prove that we can carry them out and hit the target as well as the more expensive airplanes and also prove that we can get to the target without being uh, shot down by enemy ground fire or enemy airplanes. And that's the purpose of the program starting here this week. At Eglin, we will demonstrate that the weapons will fall off, that we can hit the target. That's basically what we'll do here. Then later on this summer, we will go to Edwards Air Force Base and run operational demonstrations against typical targets uh, on the Edwards Ranges and the Nellis Ranges in Las Vegas area. Just so that I understand a little bit more about what's going on here today, is it? Am I right in believing that the plane is not one of the planes used in 1940? It's a model of one of those with new 1984 parts. So I, so it's not. It was never used before. There are only 10 percent of the airplane is old P-51 parts. It's basically a 100 percent new airplane. All right. Good enough. Okay. Thanks That's enough much. now. I like my schedule. <laughs> well, you got Dean and Calvin in the house, all right? <laughs> That's right. Gotcha. Oh, he's pretty TV. Come down here. You can get to see them all. Look. How you doing, Dave? All right. All right. Well, I don't want to get me in that picture because I didn't wear my nice, pretty white jacket. Oh, all right. Okay. Tell me who you are. I'm Dave Lawrence, and I'm chief test pilot on the Enforcer program. And Jerry Singleton. Enforcer test pilot. Now, tell me how you two gentlemen happened to pick this pilot. I had been with Piper before working on the Cheyenne 3 flight test program, and uh, after that I did a program for the Chilean Air Force, a little Chilean trainer that we developed at Piper. And when that program was completed, Mr. John McCollum, who is Vice President of Special Projects at Piper, asked me to come over and work with him on uh, the Enforcer program, which I did. I was chosen because of the fact that I'm a United States Air Force test pilot graduate and additionally have experience on weapons separation programs. And that ties in with the fact that here at Eglin what we're doing is weapons separation and weapons accuracy tests. Now, how do you feel about flying a plane that made of people from an older plane? That? Well, that, that question has been asked many times before and although there are some similarities to the World War II P-51 Mustang. This is a totally new uh, aircraft, similar in design than the old Mustang. It has its heritage in the Mustang lines, but this is a modern-day uh, 
a newly developed close air support airplane. The difference between uh, this airplane and many others that are being built today is this airplane is supposed to be able to perform its mission uh, at a very low cost compared to the present airplanes doing the similar type missions. How long will you be out here flying the uh, We should be here two and a half to three months. Absolutely. This is an exciting program for both Dave and I because of the fact of the nostalgia involved in, in that the airplane is based on the P-51 design, which was, had, which was a fighter that had such a famous reputation in World War II. But basically, both of us being in the aviation test field, uh, any test program is, is a challenge and an exciting work for us. I think especially this type of airplane, this is something that that uh, modern day test pilots don't really get a chance to, to experience the exposure in all facets of a test program that we have the ability and capabilities to do in this airplane. So it, as Jerry said, it's very exciting for both of us. Right. Hey, Oh, that's it. You with the camera lab here? Yeah. Oh, we'll be doing a lot of this. Frank has, always has good things to say. Gary. Say funny. <laughs> Gurgle Murgle. and propeller-driven, World War II vintage airplane. Oh. I must be crazy. <laughs> Either that or highly paid. Then you're going to go land on the boat. <laughs> oh, come on. Tell him you do it for the love of I don't. I do this for very little money. Ask John. <laughs> <laughs> no, you do do it is for the money. <laughs> 